Welcome to Velocity RC Magazine's how-to video on how to paint a relatively simple three-color paint job and then use some external decals to finish out the project. So the first thing we're going to do is cover all the accessories you're going to need to do this paint job. You're going to need a body with window masks, of course, and we decided to go with the ProLine Bulldog body for the B4.1. You're also going to need some masking tape, some pre-cut vinyl masks, which we're using the Triple X Main Wicked Flames paint mask. You're going to need some external decals. ProLine includes some with the body, and we're also going to use Dark Bloom from Triple X Main, and also some of our uh, red die-cut Velocity RC Magazine decals. You're going to need some spray paint. Uh, in this case, we're going with the Tamiya Polycarbonate paint. Three colors. We're going to do a relatively neutral black, white, and gunmetal spray can paint job. You're also going to need a hobby knife, a sharp hobby knife to cut out masks, some curved Lexan scissors to trim the body out to mount it, and a hair dryer, which we'll be able to use in between coats to uh, dry the paint quicker so we can get this project moving quicker. And that's all the items you're going to need. So before you start any painting project, you have a little bit of prep work. And that entails washing the inside of your polycarbonate body out with dish detergent and warm water. Sometimes you get mold release in there or, or oil or other debris or contaminants and you want to wash all that out to make sure that the paint can really bond well within the body. So run some warm water. Uh, I use a paper towel and, and get the suds going on the soap and, and really, really wash the inside really well. Uh, rinse it out really well, make sure there's zero soap residue and then afterwards dry it out thoroughly with a, a lint-free towel or a paper towel. But just make sure that there is absolutely no moisture left inside the body. Next, you're going to want to apply the window masks, so just line up the pre-cut window masks that ProLine provides with the body, with the uh, mold lines on the body, and then after you have all your window masks in, rub your finger very firmly along all the edges to make sure there's a good bond between the masks and the body to ensure that you don't get paint bleed once we start laying paint in a, in a few more steps. Alright, so the next thing we're going to need to do is apply the masks for the actual paint scheme. We've already removed all the unusable portions out of the Wicked Flames paint mask, uh, so they're ready to apply. And we're going to use the included clear transfer tape that uh, comes with the masking kit to apply each of the masks into the body. You may want to cut up some of the larger masks into smaller pieces, making it a little bit easier to apply. Once all the paint masks are installed, you're going to want to rub your finger along all their edges to make sure you have a really strong bond between the mask and the body, just as we did with the window masks. It's a good idea to do this while looking at the outside of the body so you can see exactly where the masks aren't sticking well. As with any painting project on a clear polycarbonate body, you want to paint from darkest colors to light. So we're going to use regular masking tape now and mask off the inner portion of the body where the white paint's going to go. And that'll leave the outer portion exposed and ready for the black paint. Uh, I will remind everyone that it is very important that you use paint that's designed for polycarbonate bodies. Uh, companies like Pactra, Tamiya, and Parma all make great polycarbonate paint that remains flexible so it won't chip off when the body flexes. Um, we're using the actual Tamiya spray cans now on this job, uh, but any of those three brands will work great. Give your rattle cans a really, really good shaking before you, before you start spraying to, to really mix up the paint. So you're ready to start spraying some paint now. Uh, give each of the window and paint masks one final rub down with your finger to make sure they're, they're firmly bonded to the body. And then you're ready to start spraying. Your first coat should be an extremely light dusting. You don't want to put too much paint on the body initially. Uh, there's two advantages to this. The light dusting will help to glue down all the mask edges and it'll also prevent um, paint, paint running and, and pooling up around all your mask edges that could bleed under and give you a, a, a non-crisp line. So go ahead and do a really light dusting for the first coat and then use your hair dryer on the low heat setting to, to dry it off. Um, after you've dried the paint with the hair dryer, let the body cool down a little bit and then you're almost ready for your next coat of paint right off the bat. Um, as long as you're using the hair dryer to dry the paint in between, you can pretty much go on right to the next color or, or the next coat anyways. So once that first one's dry, spray on your second coat. Now you're going to go on a little bit heavier. You still don't want to have the paint running, you still don't want any pooling paint, but the, the second coat is going to be a little bit heavier than the first dusting. Uh, and you should have almost full coverage uh, after your second coat. And then again, use your hair dryer to completely dry it off uh, in between coats, let the body cool down a little bit. 
and then move on to your final coat. Your final coat should almost just fill in any light areas. Uh, three coats should be more than enough, especially with the darker colors. So just go on and do a, a relatively light third coat and fill in any light spots. You can even hold the body up to the light so you can see where the light areas of paint are. But finish off with your final coat and then again use your hair dryer to, to dry it off and uh, first color of paint's done. Now that the black paint is laid and fully dry, we're ready to move on to the next color. So we're going to gently remove all of the masking tape from the center section of the body to expose the uh, clear area for the next color, which in this case is white. Uh, you have to be very careful when you're removing the masking tape on this step because we want the flames paint mask to remain on the body. So gently peel away the old mask and expose the center section. and. Uh, you're going to rub your finger along the window masks and the paint masks one, one last time just to make sure that the edges are, are firmly pressed down and then we're ready to hit the white paint. You're now going to spray the white paint in almost an identical way that we did the black. Um, starting with a very light first dusting coat, drying it with a hair dryer and then following it up with two more slightly heavier coats until we have full coverage uh, using the hair dryer to dry the paint in between coats. Now there is one thing I want to add that is quite important. We already discussed how you want to paint from darker colors to lighter colors when you're painting on the inside of a polycarbonate body. And in this case, given the order of operations, we're not going to be able to put the gunmetal flames down before we paint the white. So it's pretty important that the white is, is as opaque as possible so that the, the gunmetal color that we're going to spray on later doesn't show through. So for this reason, um, after your first dusting coat, maybe go on a little bit heavier on your second and third coats and maybe even go on a fourth coat to add just a little bit more paint or you could back the white with a, a thin coat of silver to help uh, ensure it's fully opaque. Generally, white has pretty decent coverage and the gunmetal shouldn't show through, but it's important to be aware of that. Alright, so now that we've got the white paint down, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is removing the flame paint masks to put on the final color. It's pretty important at this stage of the game that the paint is fully cured, because the next mask that we'll be removing actually has paint up against its edges. And if you remove a mask before the paint's fully cured, it can tear the paint and give you a jagged edge and uh, make the body look really terrible. So Use the hair dryer trick to dry off the paint as much as you can, but I recommend you leave it for a few hours extra and even overnight if you have the time to, to ensure that the paint's fully cured. Once you are ready to remove the flame masks, you can start lifting up the, the edge of the mask with a hobby knife and then slowly peel the mask uh, off of the body, trying to go parallel along the cut line, like try and pull it along the paint line. And this will help to reduce the chance of tearing the paint as well. And then now you'll have all of your flame paint mask area exposed and clear and ready for the final color which in this case is the gunmetal. Um, you're going to want to rub your fingers one last time along all of the window masks to make sure that none of those edges have lifted off and then you're ready to paint the final color. Spray on your three light coats of the gunmetal and use the hair dryer in between coats to help speed up the drying quicker and then you're done the painting portion of this project. We are going to take you through one final optional step on this painting procedure and that's to put in some custom window trim. Take a sharp hobby knife and trim out a really thin outline around each of the three window masks and remove that material. Rub your finger along the window mask edges to make sure they're fully pressed down and then put two or three coats of paint on using your hair dryer to dry in between. It only takes a couple minutes to do this little trick and it really makes the body look nice. So that's it. The painting component of this project is completely done and you're ready now to remove your window masks, remove your outer protective film and trim out your body with your curved Lexan scissors and then we'll move on to applying the external stickers. Before you slap your stickers into place you'll need to cut them out from their sheet. Use a hobby knife or curved Lexan scissors to do this trying to get as close to the design as possible but don't worry too much as decals are printed on clear vinyl so a border around them won't be overly noticeable anyways. Once your stickers are trimmed out, you can place them over your body to get a rough layout idea to see how you want to install them. Applying decals can be a little tricky, especially larger ones. The method I like to use is to peel back a small portion of the decal and cut off a small bit of backing behind to expose some of the adhesive. Line up the graphic on your body, then press the exposed portion of the decal down. Flip the decal up, remove the rest of the backing, and slowly roll the decal into place. This method ensures your decals are installed straight and greatly reduces the chances of trapping air bubbles beneath the graphic. 
Finish applying all of your decals in this fashion and you've completed your simple paint with stickers paint job with Velocity RC Magazine.